CataractCoach.com. How to fix sneaky hair with a pale blue iris. You have to be extra gentle, otherwise the iris is going to get damaged. So here's the case. Patient had an episode of anterior uveitis about a year ago, has been quiescent since then. You can see this is the maximum dilation we can achieve with pharmacologic agents. Making two pairs of TCs on opposite sides of the cornea here. And now we'll go in with our lidocaine preservative free, cut 50 50 with BSS. And we're going to go in and try to inject a little, but also try to use that cannula to break the adhesions of the iris from the anterior lens capsule very gently. Now, a blue iris like this that's so pale and depigmented, this iris is very wimpy, and you have to be so careful during surgery. You can already see there's translumination through that pupil margin. So we'll make the main incision here. We have a reasonable fill of viscoelastic, but the eye is still on the softer side. And we're going to go in with the capsorexis forceps and try to break or peel off any membrane that may be there. So we'll try to grab it. But again, look how wimpy the tissue is. In someone with a brown iris, with a lot more pigmentation, it's a lot stronger. And in this case, you don't want to damage the iris. You don't want to cause a visible issue. Because you'll look at this patient across conversation distance, and they may have a deformed pupil, which is not going to be good. So we'll do a gentle pupil stretch, not too much. I don't want to stretch it too much. I don't want to have big tears in the iris sphincter. Micro tears are okay, but you can see it's a very wimpy tissue. Chopper in one hand looks like a hook in the other hand. And that's, you know what, that's probably all we're going to get. Now you say, okay, I'll put in a pupil expansion ring. Really? If you put that pupil expansion ring in, it's almost certainly going to damage and tear that iris. So I'm just going to do Osher's viscomedriasis to get the pupil a little bit bigger here. That's it. Now look at the transillumination defect. You can already see through that iris tissue here. That's how wimpy it is. It's so delicate. So I'm going to make a rexus here that's going to be a little bigger than the pupil. This pupil is probably four millimeters or so, and I'm going to still try to make that five to five and a half millimeter capsule rexus. I want that larger rexus so that post-op, the iris or pupil margin is not going to stick to our hydrophobic acrylic lens. Now, I'm going to speed the video up, going to four times speed now. There is the whole nucleus. You really can't bring it up out of the bag too much because the pupil is just too small. And the pupil is inelastic. It's not stretchable here. There's a fibrotic little membrane there that we could not remove. And that's going to prevent the pupil from expanding so much more. So we're going to have to operate in a hole, if you will. We're operating here inside that small pupil. I'll try to bring some of the cataract pieces up if we can. And now, fortunately, it's not a very dense cataract, so we can take these pieces down pretty easily. We've got to be very cautious here, getting all the pieces up out of the bag. Now, importantly, we don't want to leave any lens material behind. So we'll be very careful. There's the cortex removal. We're going to need to check under the iris 360 once we get the lens in to make sure that we don't have any residual lens cortex or little nuclear chips or anything else. There's the viscoelastic, a cohesive agent. Here comes the lens, a single piece monofocal acrylic lens, putting that inside the eye. That's a hydrophobic acrylic. Open that up. That looked a little bit of cortex there, a little lens material. So going around checking 360 with that chopper, yeah, there's a little piece there too. So there are a few little pieces left that we need to get all those flushed out of the eye, get all the viscoelastic out, and then be very careful. This is about all you can do. You can't really expand this pupil much more without causing iatrogenic damage. Now, fortunately, this pupil is going to be a relatively normal-looking pupil at conversation distance, and we didn't cause any iatrogenic iris damage. I'm using BSS on the camera here to just really flush out underneath the iris, in the bag, lots of flushing out just to make sure we don't have any retained pieces. A little triamcinolone to quell inflammation, because remember, prior uveitis, even though this eye is quiescent, we want to make sure it's not going to flare up again. Sometimes the just doing the surgery itself can cause enough inflammation to cause the uveitis to flare up. So what we'll do is seal up all the incision there, put some tetracaine on the sponge and touch the eye with that. Now here comes a limbal relaxing incision. And that's to get the 180 meridian against the rule. And this patient had a really nice outcome. So be very careful with a pale blue iris.